Welcome to Wednesday morning's devotions. We're in Romans chapter 7 and we will try and ever look at the whole chapter today, although we'll read just part of it. Read first of all from verse 1 of Romans 7. Or do you not know, brothers, for I'm speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives? For a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she'll be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she's freed from that law. And when she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ. So that you may belong to another, to him who's been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for the Lord, for God. For while we are living in the flesh, our sinful passions are roused by the law, where it work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit, and not in the old way of the written code. Then verse 21. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God, in my inner being. But I see in my members another law, waging war against the law of my mind, and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. We're looking today under the heading Free in Christ. Um, Paul is, is teaching the relationship of the Christian to the law. He, he's wanting to go on to speak about the life and the spirit in chapter 8. But what he wants us to do is to be aware of the continued influence of sin in our lives. And so, the first thing he talks about in verses 1 to 6 is about being freed from the law. He says in verse 1 that the law is binding as long as people are alive. He, he gives the example indeed of a marriage where a woman is bound to her husband as long as he's alive. But indeed, when he dies, she is no longer bound to him. And so he's teaching that we're freed from God's law. We're freed, he's teaching, through Jesus' death. And we're freed in order to bear fruit. Now, how are we freed from the law? Well, let me mention two ways we're freed from the law. We're freed from the law in regards to being condemned by the law. The law condemns us for we fail to measure up to it and we're freed from that condemnation through what Jesus has done and secondly we're freed from the ceremonial law in keeping it because Jesus has perfectly fulfilled the ceremonial law of all the sacrifices and that was related to it and so through the death of Jesus Paul is teaching we're freed from the the law as indeed a rule over our lives or as a as a force over us and we have this new life in the spirit he teaches. This new way, this new life in the spirit. So we're freed from the law in regards to condemnation and the ceremonial law. But secondly, he deals in verses 7 to 12 about the relationship between sin and the law. And sin is exposed by the law, he says, in verse 5. Indeed, or more than that, uh, sin indeed is aroused by the law. Uh, you take a, an example of, imagine a, a lift, two lifts in a tower block. One lift says, do not write on the wall, and the other lift says nothing. Which lift will indeed have more of the writing? And that's the point. Just a command by itself, it puts the thought in people's minds, it arouses the desire of sin. And Paul speaks of that. 
the law indeed it's not bad the law is important he says there it makes us conscious of sin but at the same time the law arouses sinful thoughts within us the law makes sin so alive in people's hearts and so indeed the law leads to death sin sees its opportunity to harm and destroy in the light of the law sin is a strong and powerful force which the law cannot defeat when the law tries to direct people in a certain path sin will take them even more in the other direction and so freed from the law sin in the law and then thirdly he goes on to speak about sin within in verses 13 to 21. Now he says here, the problem in, in verse 13 to 14, the problem is not the law. The law isn't bad. There's nothing wrong with the law. But the problem is the sin within us. And he, he gives a, a testimony there in verse 15, a testimony which I relate to so well. For I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. And so Paul is speaking about the power of sin here. He says, things I want to do to please the Lord, I don't do it. And evil things I don't want to do, I end up doing it. Such is the power of sin. And he goes on and he works that out in verse 16 to 20. But this contradiction that lies within him, he wants to do good, but indeed Sin keeps dragging him down. And so there's a desire with him since he's come to know Christ and trust in Christ to live that good life, to please the Lord. But there's another law at work within him. And we're thinking of here, law like gravity pulls him down and takes him away from Christ. And so he leads to the final point, which is victory in Christ. He says in verse 22, how he delights to obey God. He delights to do what is right. But then he comes back in verse 23. This other law that's working within him. And he, he's almost at his wit's end in verse 24. He says, O oh, wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Oh he's almost given up here. He wants to live for Christ. He wants to live for God. But he just keeps getting pulled down. He says, who will deliver me? Look at the answer in verse 25. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. It is Jesus who will bring the deliverance from the power of sin within us. So you see what Paul's teaching here. Law cannot defeat sin. Law even arouses sin to make sin worse. There's only one answer to the sin in our lives. The Lord Jesus. And so, in order to live a more obedient, faithful life, we don't just immerse ourselves in commandments and just try hard to keep them. We flee to Christ. We experience more of the life in Christ, the life of the Spirit which he's leading to, which then gives us the grace to live this life of obedience. God bless.